Hey, the Bible is full of very violent acts. There's women having the babies ripped out of wombs. There's yeah. people with their heads cut off. It doesn't hide the atrocities of man. It reveals them and says God is going to judge the world in righteousness. Well, and in some cases, but, God is commanding them. Right. Yeah, but so, so you believe this, this really happened? No, but so what, what I'm upset about. I'm upset because there are people who believe it really happened. And, be, and, and because people are calling it the good book and a moral code and handing it to children and then picking and choosing and saying these first ten commandments are the divine law, but the 603 that come after it we can ignore. 613. Yeah, the 603 yeah. that come after the ten. Oh, ah, I see what you're saying. I did the math ahead of time. <laughs> That's good, good work, job, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, listen, um, just be tolerant of other people's beliefs. I mean, we live in America, and this is a free, freedom of religion nation. We're not like some of these uh, Middle sure. East countries. So don't let it upset you and let people read what they want and believe what they want. Well, well I mean, the thing is, is, this isn't just a matter uh, of being upset. I'm happy. I mean, you're <laughs> entitled to believe whatever you want, and I'll support your right to believe whatever you want. The problem comes, though, when people act, uh, you know, you don't live in a vacuum, and you take actions that affect other people. And there is a contingent uh, within the population that identifies as Christian, who knows whether or not they true are, uh, truly are, it, that are out to marginalize the rights of others. And they think they are of the opinion that this is and should be a Christian nation and the Constitution be damned. Do you, we, think, we, do you think I believe that, Matt? Well, no, I, I don't necessarily know that you believe that, but I, I'm pretty sure that you vote along those lines if I had to guess that you're going to vote for somebody, you would be more likely to vote for somebody who would, for example, outlaw abortion than somebody who would wanted to continue with abortion being legal, wouldn't you? Absolutely. That's, right. that's my criteria. I can't, don't care about the fiscal policies of anyone. If they believe in the murdering of children in the womb, I'll not vote for them. Sure. So you are part of the problem that is infringing on people's <laughs> rights by your I'm, voting. But I be a problem because I want to live kids to live in the womb. Because well, you don't get to dictate reproductive rights or any other rights for anybody else. I, I want to give but you an example. Minute, that, that's, but that's, you take it back. If, if you vote for people that are, that are pro-abortion, you're doing exactly the same thing. I, I'm voting for people that are for reproductive rights. I'm for freedom. I'm for what this country was founded about. I am not trying to rip people's freedoms away based on my own personal views of what's right and wrong. Yes, you are. No, you're I'm doing not. What you're doing what you're accusing me of doing. You're dictating what a woman can do and can't do with her womb. No, I'm not dictating. I'm saying that she has the option. You are limiting an option. How is that? If this is like... Um, uh, this, is, this is like whether or not blacks and whites can marry. I'm saying they should be free to marry if they want to. It doesn't affect anybody else. Okay, and well, you're, you have you're that on the right position of America, and that's cool. And you've got to give me the right to vote the way I want to vote. I, 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 vote I right give you the right. The you I fully give you the right. I, I, I've never denied that. What I'm saying is that by doing so, you are part of the problem that we're objecting to. Oh, so it's you that's objecting to the problem we're making by saying don't kill the children in the womb. Okay. Yeah. Let, let me give you an example of how. Um, like faulty beliefs could have some consequences. Uh, did you know that the world is going to end on May 21st? No, but it keeps changing. It's like the theory of evolution. Yeah. Right. So some people really, really believe that. And uh, just yesterday we were talking about a story in which a woman slit her kid's throat because she had the sincere belief that the tribulation was about to come. Now, you and I, <laughs> I think, agree that it's kind of ridiculous to try to pin this date down. But I think we would also agree um, that there are dangerous side effects of believing in something irrational. There's a lot of nutcases out there, and sadly, yeah. a lot of nutcases gravitate to the warmth and friendliness they find at a local church. Yeah, I, I mean, that is a shame. Yeah. And the media jump on something like that because it makes good news. Yeah, it's, it's ridiculous. When I first heard this, this announcement, I was like, well, this is the umpteenth you know, world is ending uh, in the past 10 years or so, um, and mm -hmm. I didn't care about it at all, but evidently these people have some money behind them and put up billboards and managed to get some press, and it, then it's, of course, you know, had this dramatic result. And I don't, I don't remotely blame you on it. I don't blame, I don't blame all, of, all Christians, all anybody in any particular Certainly category for, for everything else that goes on. Um, and when I, when I talked a moment ago about you being part of the problem, I, wasn't, I was specifically referring to... Um, the issue of rights and uh, legislating in order to infringe upon people's rights. Right. Now, I understand that we have a very different view, and I, I, I probably could have gone with something easier. I picked abortion because it was obvious. I mean, I, I, 
I couldn't have imagined for a second that you would have any other view other right. than being opposed to abortion. Absolutely. Um, although I, I really, uh, having you know searched the Bible, uh, can't find any biblical support for that. Um, you, most Christians tend to cite Jeremiah 1.5, um, but if you read that carefully, it has nothing at all to do with the individual in the womb being an actual person. And Jewish law doesn't consider it that way. So it, it's kind of a... Well, a I don't go to Jeremiah. I go to where it says uh, when a woman is with child. It always uses that phrase. Yeah. So that's what, what my criteria so, so you're relying on the, the English from the 1611... Oh, no, no, not at all. I, if I wasn't a Christian... Uh, I don't think I'd want to kill a child in a womb, n no matter what. Well, I'm just saying that you, you're making your biblical appeal is that they use the phrase with child, and that's a particular, you know, not only English definition, but it represents the thinking of the time. Um, if this goes back to kind of wanting to make appeals to dark age ideas just because they're, they're consistent and when something with, with what you already believe. Hey, I only believe back about, you know, a few thousand years when it comes to the scriptures. You go billions of years. So if anyone's got bigger faith, you have. No, because we have evidence for <laughs> th the fact that it's four and a half billion years old. I'm sorry, I shouldn't have gone back to that issue. I mean, <laughs> it's dead. Well, it, it was kind of a theme at yeah, first. Yeah, no, it's, it's, you go back to whatever issue you want. It's, it's absolutely fine. You know, what I'd like to go to is the sure. fact that... Um, Atheists are always trying to get me to say how old I think the Earth is, and I really, I really don't care. And I'll just give a silly little analogy as to why I don't care how old the Earth is, and it might make more sense. I, this is this is my worldview. I see you and I, Matt and Russell and everybody else in this great big plane that's going to crash. We've all been given a parachute. We're told to put it on. Mm -hmm. And I say, Matt, please put on your parachute. And you say, how old do you think this plane is? No. What well, I, let you me know, the analogy. actually, let, Ray. Let me finish the analogy. Okay, And I say, Matt, please, I don't care how old this plane is. Put the parachute yeah. on, then we'll talk. And you say, no, I don't believe in parachutes. I don't believe That's we have to not what jump. I say. That's not what I say. This is, this is why this analogy is so horrible. <laughs> well, I said it was pathetic when I started. Well, well why, what I say is, how do you know the plane's going down? What yeah. makes you think Well, you're going to die, aren't you? Well, actually, I'm Ray... I'm asking, uh, how do you know the plane's going down? I mean, you're going to uh, die. That's uh, what I'm saying. You're going to have to jump. Yeah, no, but no. a few minutes ago, I checked the altimeter and the attitude indicator and the rest of the scientific instruments on the plane, and they all showed me that the plane is actually holding steady and not crashing at okay, all. Okay, I shouldn't the only the purpose, going to, okay, The only the person plane. who's coming to me telling me that the plane is going to crash is you. you, you and, are, and by the way... Let's forget the plane <laughs> crashing. I'm sorry I mentioned it was going to crash. Sure. You're going to have to jump. You're going to pass through the door of death. It's going to happen. Could be tonight, could be tomorrow, could be next week. I'm saying... Put on a parachute. Put on the Lord Jesus Christ. The, the, uh, the age of the plane doesn't matter. I want to see you guys saved. I, I'd hate you to go to hell. My heart, my heart breaks at the thought of guys like you ending up being justly damned because of your sins. Uh, it breaks my heart that that would happen to any human being. I agree that I'm going to die. You're asserting something additional about death yes. that you can't dememonstrate. Yes, and I what can. You're, and what you're doing is akin to coming to me and telling me my house is on fire, as you used in the firefighter episode of, of Way the Master. Um, which, by the way, I don't know if you've seen the minute-by-minute minute deconstruction I did of that one and the atheism one, but I'll point you to them if you'd like. Thank but, you. But you're coming to me and saying your house is on fire, and I look around, and I don't see any, I don't smell any smoke, I don't see any fire. I go around, I look at the house, and I say, I don't see this. Well, if, there's, there's a standard by which we determine whether or not you're just a crazy guy knocking on my door to tell me my house is burning down. What's the standard? The, the standard is I go around and look, and I don't see any fire. And I ask somebody else, have you seen any, any indications of fire? And no, they haven't as well, because reality is confirmed by mutual agreement sometimes as a way of gathering more evidence towards the truth. You know, there's a, there's a smoke detector uh, that you've got built in. It's called the conscience. And if you take the batteries out and don't let your conscience speak to you, ah. you'll think everything is fine. If you think there's nothing wrong with lust or greed or hatred or selfishness or or uh, ingratitude to God, then you'll think you're sweet. But if, you, if you've got a tender conscience, I'm, I'm then, glad, then you'll see you're in trouble. I'm glad would, that scientific advances have given us smoke dete detectors, and it's interesting that none of these smoke detectors have indicated any sign of a soul so far. Yeah. Um, let, me, let me ask this. <laughs> Hang on a minute. I interviewed a biologist at uh, UCLA 
about two months ago, a, a, an evolutionary okay. biolog biologist. Mm -hmm. And he changed his mind about the existence of the soul when I told him one thing. Would okay. you like to hear what the one thing is? I would is? love to hear sure. that. Sure. Okay, he absolutely did a big turnabout, and we've got it on camera, and I, I, God bless the guy for it. I just said, did you know that the word soul and the word life are synonymous in the Bible? Okay. He said, what? I said, yes. It is, they are interchangeable. When the Bible speaks of the soul, it's speaking of the life. He said, well, if that's, if everybody's got a life, then everybody's got a soul. Sure. And okay. so that's, you just, when you realize you got, that. You got two atheists who will agree to your little semantic trick. It's not a semantic trick. It's, it's different. <laughs> Saying that two words mean the same thing in the Bible is not the same thing as that we have some immaterial presence that continues on after we're dead. Do you have a soul? Entirely, is the soul it's entirely dishonest of you to even do that. Do you have a life, Matt? I have a life. And it's what motivates your body. It's what looks out of your eyes and speaks through your mouth and makes your brain work. It's your life. No. That's your soul. Those things are all part of my life. You can call it a soul all you want. But if you then say that this soul continues on after I'm dead, you've now made a claim. I didn't say that. Do, do you not think so? Yeah, God okay. said it. It's sure. eternal. Uh, you say that God said it. I don't, I'm not aware that any God has ever said anything. But you say this. Um, let me. We are almost out of time, and there's one thing I want to hit, uh, just to see if maybe we can agree on this. Bananas. All right. No, not no. bananas. <laughs> There, there, there are bananas on the on the set, but it wasn't my doing. We didn't uh, put them there. Let me let me get to this. In in the book, um, you can lead an atheist, atheist to evidence, but you can't make him think. In the conclusion, you uh, start with your parachute thing, but then you say, now think of the four major religions: Hinduism, Buddhism, Islam, and Christianity. And you begin to go through and assess them to determine which one someone should choose. You're familiar? With? Yes, yes, okay. I wrote that. Okay, uh, I won't hammer on the fact that you you know you, you only picked four options because that's all we need re really right now anyway. But you assess all four of them with the preconception that Christianity is true. You fault Buddhism for not solving a problem that's intrinsic within Christianity. You fault Hinduism for, for something not solving a problem. that you, you say, you know, the Bible says this and Hinduism doesn't do anything about this and Buddhism doesn't do anything about this. Isn't that incredibly dishonest because a, a Buddhist could look at Christianity and say it doesn't solve the problems of, that are intrinsic within Buddhism, and a Hindu could look at Christianity and say it doesn't solve the problems that are intrinsic within Hins in, in, uh, Hinduism. Do you think it's unfair to lay this on me when I've got one minute to answer how long we've got? Well, I, I thought it was a really sure. easy answer. I thought you were just going to agree that... Yeah, no, that it's not dishonest. Okay. If you look at it and understand that the Ten Commandments make all the difference, and that's what shows all sure. those religions are works righteousness religions. You cannot earn everlasting life. It's, it can only come as a free gift of God. I, I really wish I really wish that we could demonstrate exactly why this is dishonest, but I think you just did by making an appeal back to the Bible. Um, you, you've got this presupposition, which is what I, I pointed out at the beginning, and you're judging it based on that presupposition. Well, we all do that. Well, no, we actually all don't. And that's, Ray, uh, uh, give, give a plug we, for we have, yeah, something, a yes. website, a book. We, we we we've loved gotta, having you on. We have to put the credits on. We'll be happy to have you again. But plug whatever you need for, for yeah, one second. Yeah, the ASIC experience is a great program. Good, good host. Uh, <laughs> good to talk to you guys. All right. Thanks a lot, Ray. Thank you, Ray. God bless you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. I'm not so sure God will bless us. But there's the crew.